Ian Lees Galloway at Auckland Airport late this morning. Well, the company he'd just met with, he was flying back to Wellington after the meeting, was Freightways, although the independent contractor model exists throughout the career industry, including in the SOE New Zealand Post. But we've spoken to New Zealand Post in the past. We've never spoken to Freightways. This afternoon, their CEO, Mark Trohier, was available. He told me he discussed with the minister the company's independent contractor model and why he wanted to protect it, which they and other transport operators want to do very much. I asked Mark Trohier how many drivers, aka independent contractors, aka business partners, are employed by Freightways. We've got around a thousand, just over a thousand independent contractors. Okay, and let's go through the terms and conditions under which they work for you or with you. Uh, do they get annual leave? So no, they operate like any other small business, John, so they work on the basis of bringing an asset into the business, working that asset to provide the services. They can take uh, time off whenever they wish, but you've got to have someone else running the store. So right. just like a cafe, a Subway sandwich franchise, any of those types of things, absolutely, you can be away from the business, and we have many contractors that'll go away for weeks, sometimes months, guys that'll take a day off every week. And what they do is provide a relief driver, often a family member, a friend, or somebody they share amongst a pool of contractors. They have to be approved to by you, don't they? They don't. They have to be. That makes it sound as if you could just take a day off and get Jack or Betty or whoever, and they have to be approved by you, don't they? They have to have a well, uniform. Look, yeah, effectively, you can get Jack or Betty, but you know they can't have a criminal conviction um, and, and those types of things. So there, there's some minimum standards, absolutely, that you have to meet. You've got to have a valid license, etc. And yes, we do ask them to wear a uniform. That's um, that's pretty standard across the courier okay. industry globally, I, which I, works on that type of model. So if you take annual leave, you have to organise your own replacement and pay them yourself. That's right, isn't it? Yes. OK. Do you get sick leave? If you're sick, what happens? So if you're sick, again, you get someone else to drive your van. Uh, on occasions, if, some, if someone gets sick, you know, at the last minute, we'll have an employee that we can put into the van for them. Right, but normally you would organise someone to replace you and you would pay that person? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because remember, what's important is, is that the couriers have built up runs and built up customers, built up a lot of goodwill through the service they provide. What's really important is that that gets preserved. So absolutely, I mean, I've got a contractor... I don't see how that would be preserved. Picking. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to interrupt, Mark, and we're delighted to have you on Checkpoint, <laughs> and, and, and we've waited a while to get you, so I want to hear what absolutely. you're saying. But sure. it seems to me that what's most important about that model is it protects you from costs. Well, no, so what we do is remunerate contractors. So within the models we have, there's remuneration that allows them to pay someone four weeks to do their run uh, if they choose not to do it, if they want to go away on holiday, if they're sick, if they want to go overseas. OK. You, you pay them for working, don't you? We pay them for picking up and delivering right, items. Abso absolutely. Yes, yeah, small yeah, businesses are the best to pick up and deliver. And that's so what you get, John, is incomes that are far in excess of what you would get if we said, right, everyone can come and work for 17 or 18 bucks and we'll give you another 2% every year and drive my van, use my fuel card. That way you don't get ahead. It's really hard to get ahead with that model. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contractors earning well over, you know, ninety-five, dollars $100,000 plus GST doing this type of role. So, sorry, you um, say you've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contractors yes. earning over 95000 Now, that's before costs, right? So that's their revenue. That's right. OK, how many earn over 95000 uh, 500. 500 of them earn over 95000 before costs? Yes. And so how many drivers do you have in total, 1,100? So there's, yeah, close, just over a thousand, between a thousand okay. and eleven. So, so, so yeah. slightly more drivers aren't earning over ninety-five thousand dollars before costs, right? Yeah, correct. Yes. Okay, so half your fleet is earning ninety-five thousand dollars before costs, and half aren't. What sort of hours are they working a week? Well, we don't measure productive hours, so the contractor will work the number of hours they need to complete their run, but also with what fits with their lifestyle. So we've got contractors that hold, work from Hold on, from... Hold, Mark, sorry, I've got your frequently asked questions here. What are the right. hours I need to work? Generally, well, your day commences at 5 a.m. when you must come into the depot to sort freight for delivery. Depending on the run, your day would typically finish between 5.30 and 6.30. Contractors are required to work Monday through to Friday and a half day Saturday, so five 12-hour days is 60. Half a day on Saturday is 66 hours a week. 
So some contractors will work um, around about 12 hours a day, absolutely. Some contractors will work around eight hours a day, some contractors work half days. There's a, there's a, comp, there's a range of different types of contractor options within our fleet. Okay, so if you're working 66 hours a week and you are required to work 52 weeks of the year or find a replacement, let's multiply 52 times 66. So that's 3,400 hours, right? So we're going to divide your salary of 95, your revenue of $95,000 by 3,400 and we're getting an hourly rate of $27 before tax and expenses. Well, you, yes, you are through that maths, but I think what you're doing is, is taking something out of a bit of literature and applying it to the average. No, so, no, you, you, you told know. me. You told me those hours are working. Now, let's talk about their costs. <laughs> so they have to buy the van. They have to buy a high ace, for example. Yeah, so couriers generally, well, no, they can buy whatever van they like, so we'll have couriers that will invest. No, they can't. Uh, you, you tell them what vans, they... you have to approve the vans, and they have to be, what, how many years old maximum, although you, you, you prefer new, but how many old years old maximum can they be? So couriers will come along and they'll invest in a van. Typically in residential areas, they'll buy a second-hand vehicle, and depending on the type of run they'll do, they'll decide the type of vehicle they need. Typically, that'll be based around cubic capacity, but, um, but it's also a contractor choice. A lot of con contractors will like to have a Mercedes van. Some will have a Toyota Hi-Ace. Uh, there's a real range within the fleet. So they're earning $27 an hour, on the, and we've, we've gone for the good guys. We've gone for the guys earning $95,000. $27 an hour before costs. Their costs include buying a van, uh, their costs include buying a uniform, their costs include buying the scanner, their costs include having the van de uh, decorated in the colours of whatever branch of freightways they're driving for, let's say New Zealand couriers. Their costs include road user charges, their costs include the phone, and their costs include, include fuel, right? Yes, some of those costs are clearly your, your upfront costs, your capital costs for getting into a business. Again, similar, John, if you invested in a cafe and you had a fit out cost yeah, to get look, up and running, uh, uh, yeah, and, then, I, I, and then you'll have, abs and then you'll have absolutely. To, and then, can we yeah, not talk? Then, can we, Mark? Sorry, can we not talk about cafes? I want to talk about career drivers. Yeah, so what? And I'm using so, your figures. I'm using your figures, yeah. and I'm using your good figures. I'm using your top of the range figures. Well, you're so using not, my top. Of, you're using my top of the range hours, and you're using my average no, revenue no, figures. Not, no, 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 no. Well, I'm not using average. You're saying 95,000 is average. And you're using my top of the range hours. Well, no, I'm not. I'm using the hours specified in your question. I frequently ask questions for, for people who want to be drivers. I'm just quoting which, verbatim which, from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that would be the top of the range hours that you would have in courier fleets. So if we have couriers, John, that will work uh, an eight to five day with a break. And so what would they earn? What would they be earning? Oh, it, it'll, it depends on the number of kilometres they do and the number of jobs they, uh, they perform. So, you know, it's a small business based on productivity. It's based on the number of jobs you do. And the more you do, the more you earn, right. which is a fantastic model. John, we've got contractors that earn far more um, than, than you do, which is a fantastic situation, I think. So, so, so I want to talk about the hourly rate. What do you believe the average hourly rate? Let's, let's be really fair. What is the average hourly rate for a Freightways driver? So we don't work on hourly rates. Small businesses don't work on hourly rates. And it'd be a really hard thing for me to, to give you an hourly rate. F fair enough. Every, what, 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 is the average monthly, what is the average monthly revenue before costs of a Freightways driver? 95,000 divided by 12. Okay, 95,000, so what, seven, so that's about uh, eight, eight, that's $8,000 per month, right? Eight, grand about eight grand eight plus, plus year, plus year. GST per month, yeah. Okay, and from that we've got to deduct all of those costs. We've got to pay yes, tax well, you, and you, deduct all of might, those costs. Yeah, so you'll buy a van once, I would imagine, and then you, what you'll deduct is your running costs. And what do you buy the van with? I mean, most of the people borrow the money to buy the van, don't they? I'm not being glib with you here. Yeah, no, I, I, I just want, I just mm. want to get some s sort of clarity <laughs> around because you're providing me with revenue figures, but you're being really difficult on the cost side. Yeah, so, because uh, because the cost belongs to the the contract, and every contractor will have a different set of circumstances. So it's a really good point you make around the van. Many contractors will come in with a level of equity that they can buy a van, and they'll have no interest cost and no debt.
Some contractors will come in and say, yep, I'll buy a van, I'll put that on the mortgage and they'll pay their prevailing mortgage rate on that asset. There's a real range. There would be very few, from my experience, that would lease a van and pay expensive lease type rates. That's not typically the model. That's a bit like buying a house on a credit card and then renting it out. It just, you know, that's really likely to work. OK. So I guess the question, because you and I can play tennis, both of us standing at the net, whacking the ball at each other as hard as I, we possibly I doubt can. You, yeah, I doubt you and I will probably agree on, on a lot well, of this. Well, yeah, I, 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 I will agree when you give me facts. And, and, and the facts are, what is the average monthly income? And this is a fact I really want, and, 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 and I think we've been asking for it for a month now, of your drivers after costs. The, it depends on the contractor's cost. So typically, John, uh, a contractor's cost, direct costs, would sit somewhere between 15 and early 20,000 as, as a real ballpark average. Really dependent on the number of kilometres you do. So if you're on a tight run where you do 80 odd kilometres, your costs will be relatively low because your direct costs are typically fuel. If you're in a run where you do 300 kilometres, your costs will be higher because again, your costs are predominantly fuel, R and M on your van, and so you'll have a higher cost base. And, and every contractor is different. John, I think what's important is that since, since your story came out four weeks ago, and uh, it, it raised a bit of publicity, what we did was went out to our fleet and said, look, if anyone's concerned about their level of earnings, talk to your managers, talk to your to your fleet managers. And we haven't had people coming with those concerns. The one concern we have had a lot of couriers coming with is really worried about the change in status. So we've got a lot of contractors that are worried about being classed as employees. So you are saying, and you have every right to say it, that you think this is a win-win, that this model serves <coughs> you as the owner of the brand Freightways and all of the companies, uh, New Zealand Couriers, Sub 60, Post Haste, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that Freightways contains, and the drivers who are working for Freightways, many of whom over the past few weeks have told us they are really struggling to get by. You're saying, no, that's not the case. This is a win-win. Look, it's certainly not what we're hearing. So if there's contractors that are really struggling, we have, we, we talk to our contractors all the time. We have put out an invite to our contractors that, hey, if you're struggling, if you're looking to earn more income, if you want to find a way of reducing costs, come and talk to us. John, that, that's an open invitation all the time. Most of our senior management team have come from being contractors. So the majority of the general managers running those businesses you've quoted have been owner-driver contractors. And it's one of the really neat things about the business, that we've had guys that have come in, no qualifications, no skills, no particular uh, specialised licences, come in, set up a small business in probably what is, is the, the easiest way in the world to set up a small business, been really successful. And then there's a lot of those people who say, right, I'd like to have a crack at management or work within the business. So the people that run those businesses are ex-contractors. Uh, just before we go, Hawke's Bay and the email that went out to staff saying that the uniforms went up to scratch, uh, new uniforms were going to be unilaterally purchased on their behalf and the money deducted from their income. Is that acceptable? Oh, look, I think the message that I saw um, asked contractors, it's a requirement to wear a uniform. So what our customers want... And, is and you pay for that uniform yourself, right? No, no, no. It's a, yes, an ex, it's an expense for the contractor. Absolutely. So when contractors come into customers' businesses, customers give a high level of trust to contractors. Uh, many of them will give contractors keys to access their premise to either deliver items or to come in and pick items up. So when we have contractors coming in to pick up items, customers need them to be identifiable. They need them in uniforms. They need to know who they are. We deliver items for all sorts of businesses, and it's really important that when you have someone coming in, hold, taking hold, or hold on, a hold on. I'm sorry, They're look, really I, I absolutely identical. hear you, Mark, but none of those things are mentioned in the memo that was sent out to the staff. None of those things. I'm going to quote verbatim from what oh, was actually John, said to the I'm, staff. I'm, yeah, look, I don't disagree. It you are part memo. of New Zealand's that's, premier that's courier company, and part of what ensures we stay that way is our image. There are far too many instances of non-compliance on uniforms which must stop as sometimes we look very motley. This is self-protecting by New Zealand couriers, isn't it? You are insisting that contractors who you claim are independent spend more money on newer uniforms so you guys look good. 
Oh, look, it's really so they look good. Um, you know, contractors' image to their customers is really important. So contractors build business, John, by going in, delivering to a premise, and then saying, hey, do you have any items that are coming out? Is there anything I can take out? The last one of our sales reps to come in and help uh, close the deal and, and win a bit of business. It's really important to them and their image to help them build Im uh, business, that they have a good professional image. Likewise, customers expect that you're identifiable. If you come into their building and you're taking out laptops, if you're a, an IT reseller. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Sale, all of that, all that of that. That type of thing is really important. And, yeah. and John, that's, I mean, it's universal across every courier company that I know globally. Because they are the face of New Zealand couriers, right? Well, they're the face of their own businesses and New Zealand couriers, absolutely. They're not the face of their own businesses, they're the face of New Zealand couriers, aren't they? They're not wearing their own business, they're wearing New Zealand couriers, aren't they? Well, they're representing themselves in, as their own business. As Are they independent contractors? Ma Mark, one final question. Yeah. Are yeah. they independent contractors? Can they drive for your competitors, even in the vans they've bought? Well, they don't typically drive for their competitors, no. So that's that's something we're quite happy to have a look at. I'm not sure if, if Uberizing contractor drivers, taking away any minimum protections and saying, look, just deliver what I've got for you today, go and deliver something else for someone else. I don't think we'd have many contractors that would want to do that. I think that would be a really dangerous thing for the industry. But look, we, we can consider those types of things. I've never had a contractor make that request of us yet. John, thanks very much for your time. I do have another meeting I've got to go to that I'm a bit late for. But um, yeah, long time coming, so I appreciate the chance to have a chat. Mark Trohe, who's the CEO of uh, Freightways. We've been after that interview for the best part of a month. We really do appreciate him fronting. Uh, Freightways, uh, who own uh, New Zealand Couriers Sub-60, I think they are the owner of the most courier companies, uh, and certainly not alone and not fronting. PBT fronted very early on, and we haven't heard from them since. Uh, New Zealand Post gave us an interview. They are an SOE. They operate the same independent contractor model. That is the driver uh, buys the van. He or she drives. They get the signage. They have the signage. So the New Zealand Post, uh, Courier Post, or uh, in Freightways case, New Zealand Couriers, the signage that you see on the side of the van advertising the companies has been paid for by the drivers. The uniforms the drivers wear have been paid for by the drivers. The scanners, when they come to your door, they're about two and a half grand paid for by the, by the drivers. The question is not whether those expenses are legitimate. That's not the discussion. The question that's going to be tested in court is whether that kind of relationship with one company makes you an employee and therefore entitled to protections that independent contractors contractors don't have. I asked Ian Lee, Lee's, Ian Lee's Galloway at the airport today whether he felt it would be good if that was tested in court and he said yes, he looks forward to seeing what the court determines about that. Lots of uh, feedback coming in. My lovely courier driver told me today his car excess is $1,500 and he's had three minor scrapes this year. Another large cost. They're clearly being exploited. Uh, John, the crucial fact is the depreciation of the van. By the time they pay it off, it's time to buy another one. Transport companies have grown rich off the back of contractors, says Paul from Napier. Uh, thanks for that, John. I was thinking of being a Freightways driver until I heard that person explaining things. Uh, if the courier drivers are working 14 hours a day, is that safe? We, didn't, we haven't seen much 14 hours. 12 hours we see quite a lot of. Uh, people asking, are they running logbooks? That's a good question. I don't the, I know the answer to that. Um, uh, someone said he is a courier driver and every time they complain about the hours or the terms and conditions they work under they're told refer to your contract. Uh, this person says it's an exploitative situation and John Van Depreciation or Van Running Cost per KM say 75 cents per K. How many Ks per shift? Thank you.